express the difficulties of reconciliation. I just what I have made is outlining what we are doing on the process of national reconciliation. But truly, reconciliation is the most difficult to achieve, particularly in a country that has fought for a very long time. Uh, sometimes in, uh, in an army struggle, you would be fighting the person you think is the oppressor. Sometimes you would turn against your own selves when you differ. This happened in our case in South Sudan. As SPLM, we had, had, we had gone through several splits. In 1983, we had a split on just what is it we are fighting for. In 1991, we also had another split. And that polarized our society. Uh, last year, <coughs> August 8th, I was invited to, to a function, a function to remember the death of the burial, actually, the burial we had celebrated the, the commemoration of the death of our first leader, Dr. Yongarang. But on the 8th of August, this is when we buried him. So I was invited to that uh, commemoration. And suddenly I realized our communities are still divided on the issues of the struggle, of the split. Because in the split, we fought each other. I led a faction, led Dr. Yon led a faction. And the conflict was so intense that innocent people died in the process. So in that function, I told the gathering that, well, we have achieved the objective but we have not achieved reconciliation because our people are still divided. It needs us to take bold steps so that our people can reconcile. And I offered my apology to people who were affected or those who were, who were affected either uh, their kings died in the intense struggle of the same movement, or their kings got displaced, or they, they lost property. This, this is important so that we as one nation can move together. But the difficulty is in that such apologies sometimes do not get the blessing of all. There will be somebody who would say, well, if you apologize on acts done under your leadership, then who will apologize on acts done on the other person's leadership? Now, that's a big problem with us in South Sudan today. And we, we, we are also, also asking assistance in this because there are people who have gone through such a process, whether in the uh, Eastern Europe, uh, the old Yugoslavia, the struggle among themselves was also intense. Uh, similarly, like our struggle in South Sudan. Uh, so we, we, we would want to be assisted by people who have 
undergone such a process. Uh, our society is highly traumatized because people who have been subjected to war for over half a century, it, they know nothing, only violence. And that, that was manifested last week when a large group of youth attacked, in the retaliatory attacked, another community. So I would say our society is violent. It is not only the society itself. The institutions that we are heading, th there is simmering violence in it. We look at our police, you see also violence. When you send an army on an operation, they meet out unproportional force on the society. So there is a trauma running through. And uh, I remember in 2004, while we were uh, about to sign the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, one university professor from Kenya warned me and said, look, you have been at war for long. You have been in opposition for long. It might be good for you, even the leadership go through counseling. Your society needs that counseling. Day by day when I see acts in my own community, within South Sudan, I find this professor right. Uh, this forum, the, the uh, movement of moral rearmament, I think would be very helpful to us if by one way or another conferences of this kind could be held in South Sudan. Uh, our people may start to, to speak out and in speaking out uh, this would help them. The trauma would uh, would be addressed. The process of reconciliation would be even easier. Some, some of us uh, think maybe if we did truth and, truth and reconciliation commission that would do it, it might help. Then others will say no, it might aggravate the process. So when we talk of national reconciliation, behind us lies this inhibition. How do you handle it? You may do programs th that may address it, that may even aggravate it. So this is our major challenge in South Sudan, particularly that we have been subjected to a long war. Well, I, uh, I, I don't want to go further than this. I want to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, the fact w that we came, we're coming in a bigger number. It means we, we need assistance from this eminent organization. Thank you very much.